Hello, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Musings and Music Show on Vosa World Radio. I'm Egben Biwan Monjimbo coming to you on the Musings and Music Show as usual. It's a Saturday and one of the first Saturdays in the year 2023. We are glad to have made it. So Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to my guest who is going to go ahead and introduce herself to us uh, in, a, in a minute. So how do you describe yourself, ma'am, in a nutshell? First, I wanna say thank you so much, Egwe, for this uh, opportunity. And I just wanted to just applaud you and commend you for what you've been doing, giving voice to the Cameroonians in diaspora. And, you know, uh, asking people like myself, who hopefully have something to lend to the rest of us, the opportunity. So thank you so much for doing this. Very, it's very- honor important. and a pleasure. I really appreciate it. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. It's, the privilege is really mine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so for starters, um, my name is Estella Atequana, as you probably already know. <laughs> and I'm joining you from uh, Davis, California. and. I'm here, I currently serve as the Dean of the College of Letters and Science at the University of California, Davis. I moved here in 2021 to take on the position as a Dean, but spent four years at the University of Delaware as Dean of the College of Earth, Ocean and Environment. Have a long history, but we can talk about that, you know, just a, a, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, you asked me, uh, how would I describe myself? That's a very difficult question. To, I know. Uh, right? Yes. I have a lot of self reflection. Yeah, that, what makes me tick? You know, right. who am I? Basically, that's what the question is, is mm -hmm. asking. And as I thought about that question, I would say, how do people usually describe me? That's what, that's when you know who you really are is when how people typically, how they, they describe you, your characteristics. And I would say that I'm a very um, goal-oriented person. And what I want to do is to highlight those characteristics that I think will be beneficial, you know, for our young secrets who are yes. in right now, who may have the opportunity to be able to listen to this. They will. And the reason why I'm goal-oriented is because I like to feel accomplished. So without setting a goal, I feel like I'm not accomplishing anything. But with goals, they motivate me to be able to make progress. I like to see progress being made. And those are the characteristics that I've brought into my leadership. I come to any place and the first thing we do, let's set some goals. Let's have a strategic plan because I need a roadmap every day. Seriously, when I get into my office, the first thing I do is to write what are the things I want to accomplish today? Today. Very important because it helps me stay on task. If not, you get distracted with office chatter. People yes. come in, hi, and they start talking. Before you know it, an hour has gone by and you haven't done anything. Right. And so, and I also think, good to, to, to measure. That's the only way you can measure. And you can measure progress. Yeah, yes. the accomplishments. If you did not set a goal, how that's do you know right. you made it or you did not? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so those goals yes. motivate me to stay on task allows me to be able to measure progress. Right. The other thing that I find is that I am not afraid of challenges. Oh my God, bring a challenge to me. You think it's gonna discourage me? Totally psychotic. And I never see challenges as barriers. I see challenges as opportunities for growth. That's when it pushes me, extends me beyond my comfort zone. Right. And so I'm like, bring on a challenge and you're gonna see the best of me come out. You excel instead. I excel. It's a good thing you use the term excel because I'm also somebody for the students who work with me and people who work with me said, I subscribe to maximum excellence. I do not subscribe to minimum expectations. And so that can be a challenge sometimes for my students because I'm like, no, you can do better. So I'm always pushing myself 
Some people say I'm competitive, but I'm competitive with myself because I want to do better. I ask myself, is this the best I can do? And if the answer is no, then I'm going to do more. And so I've always said we got to do, we have to subscribe to excellence. And, and I think those principles were instilled in me, even in Seca, right? They always wanted us to be our best, to be excellent at everything that we, 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 we did. Mm -hmm. And the Bible- No matter the, what it was, you yes, see. Yes, what it was, yes. You know, so I've taken that throughout my life and just always ha have that expectation for excellence. So that's another characteristic that I think I could use to describe myself is that I just really subscribe to excellence, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I would also say that I'm a problem solver. I love problems. So <laughs> this is terrible that I'm saying this, but it just like, I start thinking, drawing upon all my skills that I have, if not recruit other people, mm -hmm. let's solve this. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, I want to always find out what are the challenges that people are having? What are some of the problems? Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? So I'm always wanting to make things better. All right. Let me interject just real quick and ask you if that problem solving th uh, urge, let me call it that, is that on the professional side only or does it spill over into your social life? It spills life over as even into social lives. You know, I, the answer I, say, I have this challenge. I said, okay, you have this challenge. Maybe you are working so hard and uh, perhaps um, an example could be, I don't have time to cook because I'm so busy. Then the question is, okay, now, instead of having disagreements or conflicts with the family members, the question is, what are some alternative solutions to that? Can you afford, for example, to be able to uh, get somebody to cook the special meals that your family may like, mm -hmm. maybe once every two weeks and drop mm -hmm. it off? Mm -hmm. That's a solution rather than, no, you go cook. No, you don't cook and get into so many problems. I'm like, what else, how do we really sit down and have a very simple solution to some of these problems that may not really be, really be that complicated, right? Right. And so that's what I've always done is uh, figure out, okay, what's the solution? Let's not give up. Rather than bring this problem to become a conflict, how can we address it? How can we solve that problem? Correct. And when you do that, then you find out that there's a lot of peace <laughs> wherever you are, you know? And so people have often said, you know, when you walk into a room, there's so much calm, there's peace. It's like, you just have this aura around you that uh, make people feel calm, confident, and reduces their anxiety. I think we had you freeze for a second. Yeah, you froze for a tiny second, okay. but you're right back on now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you're talking about the aura of peace around you, and I'm smiling because I've known you for ages, and that is just the plain truth. I don't remember seeing you like wringing your hands in a panic. That's what people say all the time about me, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe Never. you can ask my husband. I definitely do that at home, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also feel that I'm very optimistic, and I would usually say that I see the glass half full, never half empty. And I would always say, no matter what the challenge is, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Oh, yes. Throw out the bathwater, but keep the baby. Right. So that's really my approach or, you know, the things that, that's how I see myself. Yeah, yeah, that's how you see yourself. But then it explains, you just explained all that you have said, mm -hmm. how you got to where you are. Because you don't get to the, the level that you've gotten to. I don't know that there's any Cameroonian, somebody of Cameroonian origin that has gotten to the level that you've gotten to. Well, I don't know the, the world of academia that much. Mm -hmm. But where you've gotten to as dean, this is not the first time you're serving as dean, like you said, yes. you've gotten this far in this country, yeah. which is competitive to start with. Very competitive. <laughs> you don't get to a place like you, you've gotten to without being the kind of person that you have just described right there. Mm -hmm. you've, all, you've done a full show in what, in 10 minutes, which is the reason why you said you have said hopefully somebody would listen and get the thing. They've already gotten a ton 
from just hearing you talk about who you are. And you mentioned about meals and things, which means for those who may not know, you're not just a dean now that that's your academic life. Your social life, you are a wife, a wife yeah. of how many years now? <laughs> 34 years. We just celebrated 34 years of marriage. There you go. In December, yes. Congratulations. Thank you. you Thank and, you. And, and my brother, who is as, as competent a, a prof in his own right. Yeah. And this is that's a wife. She's also a mother. Mm -hmm. A mother to how many wonderful children? We have three children. Mm -hmm. Who are just as accomplished as their parents are. That's an, an awesome thing to hear. They're a well all round person. And with those principles, we are not surprised. Nobody can see they're surprised to see that to see this outcome. Mm -hmm. But what was what were things like for you when you were growing up? Did you see yourself back then as where you are now? Is this a surprise to you? Which I don't think it is. But just 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 kind of walk us through. Yeah. So I would say that would I have predicted me being in higher education in academia, being a professor? No. Okay. And the reason being, as you well know, uh, we did not have, I did not know of any professors when I was growing up. Did you know of any? <laughs> I did not. Like you know, our Blanton, primary school professor teachers. Yeah, but female, <laughs> exactly. female professors. Never. That's no. right. Never. So I would say that it's, this is a surprise to me when I look how far I've come and where I am right now, like, wow, who would have predicted, right? But I would well, say I, that- I guess know, I almost could. I, 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 okay, let me put it this way. If I had to say there's one person I know who would, I would have had a problem picking you. <laughs> okay, all right. So, you know, growing up, I would say that I was, I was privileged to have had the parents that I had, right? True. Um, both mom and dad believe very, very strongly in the education of the girl child. Right. Very, very important. And so very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. And really also instilled that principle of excellence in me and hard work. Of course, if you didn't come home with the top grade in the class, you got into trouble. And that's what motivated me. I didn't want to get into trouble. I hated trouble. <laughs> and so <laughs> to avoid getting into trouble, I just needed to do what they wanted me to do so I would not get into trouble. Mm -hmm. But that aside, I think that when I look at uh, my life as a child growing up, I was very, very supportive parents. And mom in particular really instilled a sense of self-worth in me. Tell me about it. I think she had seen too many women live a life that was in the shadow of their husbands. Right. And she was not going to have any of her daughters become like that right and so i i remember that even though uh they had two biological children me and vera right. our house was always full right. of children i always say biological kids because she had way too many children i mean i'm serious i have so many sisters right that may not be biological but they might as well be based on how she how they were raised body. yes and she always made sure that every person who came to stay with us, even if they came with hardly any education at all, she made sure that they were educated so they could have a little job with a little money that they could for themselves. Sustain themselves. To sustain themselves. Yes. So I've taken that even through my entire life, that even in America, I've always had I've served as a surrogate mother for so many people, mm -hmm. family members and students. And ironically, a lot of my students call me super mom. And these are students from everywhere, whether they are white kids or they are black kids from Africa, Cameroon, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They just think of me like that because I've taken those nurturing and always wanting the best of the students. Mm -hmm. Yes. for my students, making sure that they can they can accomplish right. uh, and live up to their full potential. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know that Seka, I think, played a very important role in shaping me as a person. Mm -hmm. The discipline 
right. that was instilled in us. I don't know if everybody else continued with that discipline in them or not, but so many things like, I wake up in the morning, I gotta make my bed. It has to be straight before I leave to go to work, even if I'm running late. Right. <laughs> I'm pulling and tugging at the sheets. Exactly. And the pillow. And most times I'm telling you, even with the, my husband, I'm still in it because he doesn't have to go. I'm actually, That's right. what are you doing? I'm still in it. And I'm like trying to fluff the, the, the pillow, straighten the thing. It's a reflex now. It it's is a reflex. reflex. And I just have to do it. Like the cleaning on Saturday mornings. Somehow, it doesn't matter how busy I am Saturday mornings. It's cleaning day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So those things, I, I, I think, you know, that were instilled in me and also the Christian principles, right? Right. And that have really shaped and been a guiding light. I call them my right. GPS or my right. God positioning system. Exactly. That's an interesting way to put that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think all those things, uh, as I reflect that, who I am today really is exactly. how I was brought up and right. the kind of life that I lived and um, the nurturing, not only from my parents, but from family members. Right. We were, we, that, that, that village, they say, that helps to raise a child. Right. We were privileged to have it yes. in aunties, in Sunday school teachers. There, were, there was a whole host of people you wanted to please, you wanted to be proud of you. Yes. And so because the expectations from, for, of you Mm -hmm. from them were high you did your best to live on up to them oh, those it's, it's, yes. it's how it worked mm -hmm. yes yeah mm -hmm. so along the way well what 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 would you say are the challenges that you faced and then let's do the challenges first and then of course we'll come to the triumphs because there are there are many what would you say have been the little obstacles the little roadblocks the little times when you're like It'd be a little doubtful, even though you're such a confident person by nature and optimistic by nature. What are the little setbacks you'd say? Well, you know, um, you know, the setbacks even started even as far as Seca. People don't know this, but when I was in Form 3, somehow I didn't do well in physics. And really, people don't, I mean, geophysicists today, right? Figure that yes. out. Yes. And they prevented me from doing physics. So I had this odd combination in from four and from five. Remember yes. in from three to from five is when you had to take that physics and you decided where you wanted to be a science major or you be an arts major. Right, right. So only person who took economics and history and math and chemistry and other things. I was an odd boy. People don't realize this. I'm hearing for the first time. That's correct. That's correct. And this is one of the things that I said, okay, fine. That was a challenge that I had. I'm just going to do my best, right? So as I think about where I am right now as a Dean of the College of Letters and Science, I think sometimes things happen, you think it's bad, but God can turn it around. <laughs> Use it for you good. Know what we get now I'm, I'm turning the door chair. <laughs> I'll turn on the job out of my chair and shout hallelujah. Yes, mm -hmm. I have a college that goes from music and art and history and economics and sociology and whatever, all the way to physics, chemistry, mathematics. Wow. And people are amazed that I'm able to understand. Yeah, you're at home. So flexible. Yeah, at home in both. And, right. and appreciate what all these different faculty do in this so diverse disciplines. And it's always and I think I look back and I'm like, oh, okay. At that time, I was really, really mad at Sika I know. for making me do that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I went to, you know, Cas Bambili and I did um, chemistry, biology, geology. Never heard of geology before. Mm. And but for those for those who don't know who may not understand, we did have uh, the boxes they put us the in. The boxes that they put us in. Yes, it was A1, A2, A3, A4. A4, yes. Side, then there was S1, LS, S2, S3, S4. That's, right, so I was LS4. that's where you went. Right now, I tell people don't put student, don't put kids in a box. <laughs> you just limit their ability to be able to do so much. So I'm like, so I'm a, I'm an interdisciplinary 
scientist right now, I break boundaries. I'm like, forget those silos, break them because you can never solve problems holistically uh, with those boundaries, you know. Right. Um, so fast forward, I leave and I come to the United States and the whole goal, of course, in those days, we, there was three professions that we knew. You had to go to medical school. If you even had an inkling, you're good a little bit in biology or chemistry or whatever, you know your parents wanted you to go to that medical school. And then um, there was law. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and engineering, maybe. I didn't know that we even knew any engineers growing up, you know. That was it. So that was my understanding coming here that that's what I wanted to do. And I came to Howard University and uh, and was doing pre-med and also said, you know, I think I like this geology thing. I'm just going to keep working on it. Yeah. And so uh, I took an organic chemistry class and you've, I sent you my autobiography. You read that. And the, and, the, and the teacher said, you know, all of you are here at medical school wannabes. My goal is to make sure that I weed all of you who do not really deserve to be in medical school and make things so tough. I don't remember many of my, the names of my faculty when I was at Howard, I do remember that particular faculty member's name because mm-hmm. it was just like, are you kidding me? Wow. And I don't like that as a, as, a, as a teacher. And so I dropped, I had one W on my transcript, it was organic chemistry. And as you know, if you didn't do organic chemistry, there was no pathway to medical school. Right. And so that ended up that, whole dream of wanting to go to medical school so I continued with <laughs> with the degree in geology and then you know ended up having a PhD uh, in geology so when I finished my master's at Howard University I did have funding believe it or not in those days as international students even though you may have done very well uh, funding for, for, for international students in graduate school was really tough in those days yes. so I couldn't get any funding and my advisor, my, my master's advisor had gone to school in Canada. He says, you know, you should try Canada. And I'm highlighting this because this was a challenge. I didn't have the money to pay right. uh, for, for a PhD program. Mm-hmm. And, and the only reason why I was going to go to a PhD was because I had disappointed my parents of not wanting to go or not go, making it to, uh, to, um, to, to medical school. So I, I said, okay, you can still call me doctor. Mm-hmm. So I'll go to a PhD. So that's the reason why I wanted to do a PhD. <laughs> so they could still call me doctor. Right. So I end up in Canada for my PhD program. Right. Because they gave me... That's where, funding. yes. And I'm highlighting this because to tell people that you have to take risk. And you have to be flexible. Right. I could have said, I came to America, I must stay only in America. And um, have that professor grind the the, 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 the self-esteem and self-worth out of you. Yes. Trying to persist on, on, on that. Persist, yeah. And so that's how I come and ended up that housing. And I had taken a course in geophysics that was fascinating. When I was at Howard, I'm like, I want to do geophysics. <laughs> and the advisor in Canada says, but um, you, you have to take some more math classes. You got to do the, you know, Calc 3, you got to do the DFQ, you got to do the linear algebra. I said, I'll do it. And I did, because geophysics, even though it's 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 really the using physics to study uh, the Earth, is very mathematical. So you you need even though a lot of the, the math than even the physics, you know. So I did. So that was a challenge that I was able to say, you know, I dug my heels in. I said I'm gonna do it, and I did. And so fast forward, I I then finish. And at that time, I had my we had already had our first son, mm-hmm. and um, Canada. Uh, I was looking for opportunities to remain in Canada to go there, and my husband was like, "I'm not coming mm-hmm. to Canada; it's too cold." <laughs> so, and so I found my way back to United States, and I got my, you know, my first um, appointment as um, an assistant professor at Western Michigan University. Okay. That was challenging in itself. I would say that the roughest patch of my life was that bit in academia was being hired in a program where I was the first woman 
to be hired by the university in that department. I was the first black person to be hired in that department. Hmm. So you're not there, it's not just academia, you're really there to do, you yeah. are just wearing shoes. A lot of things and people are going to be defined and determined by the way you perform out there. That's correct. You're carrying and stuff on your shoulders. The stress, right? And I say the stress because the first thing that happened to me when I showed up in the department is the faculty member comes up and says, ah, you know, you were just hired because of affirmative action. Oh. That is the worst thing that you can ever tell anybody because then I started doubting myself. Oh, I wasn't qualified for this job. I was only given the job because I'm a Black person. So guess what? To, to check off your box. Yeah, many of us have been in that position before. Oh, yes. So guess what do you do? You start working overtime. You start working day and night, five times as hard to prove that you deserve to be there and right. that you are competent and you can add value to that program and you were not hired just because you're Black. And even if you were black, a Black person, you still had what it took. So I would say that was a very, very rough patch, you know, in my yeah. career. Um, is it at that time that you, is that the at that, that time that you went, because I remember the time when you actually went to Africa, yes. to, I don't remember what country, with a bunch of students. I was like, wow. Yes. And so, but... So what happened is, and the other thing also that why I say that that patch was a really rough patch for me because in academia, when you hire people, mm. when you hire faculty, we give them two pots of money. One is a salary. The mm -hmm. second one is research funds. Okay. And I was not given any research funds and I was expected to do research. Did anybody say why? I'm just curious why the difference why i did not know and this is why it is so important to have mentors who can help you navigate as you transition from student to uh, a professional life or to careers mm -hmm. that you have people are holding your hand right. they're telling you what you need to do i do that for my students today so important Very helping with that transition from the classroom to careers yes. Yes. So many people get lost, you know, in that space. You don't even know how to negotiate for your salary. You don't even know how to do anything. And so it was only later on that the faculty member told me, you know, you should have asked for some funds. So I went to the vice, um, uh, propose, I mean, the vice president for research. And I said, I really need some money to be able to do my work because I, I can't do anything, you know. And so he gave me a little tiny little bit of money, but that was not enough for me to do much and so I said I heard that we could write proposals so I started writing proposals it took me two years to write the proposals to get funding from the National Science Foundation to buy the equipment that I needed and so if you look at my uh, record you'll find out that those first three four years was like I almost did not get tenure believe it or not because I wasn't publishing as much as I needed to because I didn't have the tools the equipment to work with but once I was able to purchase this equipment then, I, I just okay. took up and I flew. And so those are some of the real, real challenges. Of course, I've had other kinds of challenges. I just wanted to give that as an example. Mm -hmm. um, that, and that's why I say that I see those challenges as opportunities for growth. Right. Because what that also did is that I changed my research focus from what I had done as a PhD, many people continue down that line of research. I changed it completely to, to an area of research that would accommodate the students that I had at Western Michigan University. Mm -hmm. Because that school was very different from the kind of university that I've gone to. And so the research area was very different. Mm -hmm. And so rather than give up, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to reinvent myself. So I, re, I literally reinvented myself. People don't do that before tenure, but I did that because it was either I was going to swim or sink. Yeah. And I was determined not to sink. And mm -hmm. therefore I had to swim. Mm -hmm. And so that's- Adjusting it. and adapting. Adjusting is a thing. and adapting. Yes. And uh, so how I ended up in Botswana is the fact that I had a student from Botswana who kept saying, you know, University of Botswana does not have any female faculty in their geology program. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that those students will have a few girls there. They will be so excited to see somebody like you there. So if you have a sabbatical, go to Botswana. 
So I was coming up for a sabbatical. So I did manage to get tenure. Thank goodness. <laughs> and, and I said, I needed to do something. What do I do now? People take sabbatical to go to famous labs to go work. I did not know any famous people. And that's the problem of being a black person in the field that I was in. I didn't have mm -hmm. that network. I did right. not know any famous black people. I mean, famous uh, people that I could go work in their labs. So what did I do? I took myself to Botswana with three young children. My last son was barely two years old to Botswana because they gave me the offer to do a sabbatical. And they wanted sabbatical, uh, a visiting assistant. Uh, it was a visiting associate professor position they gave me because uh, they did not have anybody teaching their geophysics classes for them. Mm -hmm. And so I basically went there You're that spot. and helped to really uh, start that geophysics program at the University of Botswana, which is really thriving, you know, today. So but I went there to do, to teach, but I ended up uh, discovering or uh, working in the Okavango Delta, which is, you gotta go, if you go to Botswana, you gotta go to Okavango Delta, really, really beautiful area. Mm -hmm. And I started working there to try to understand how the Delta, the Delta was forming because that's where the continents were drifting apart. Nice. And so, and that's and those are, that's the kind of work that I had done for my PhD. So I went back to what I had done for the PhD by serendipity, it's not because that's what I planned to do. And so, when I think back today, I'm like, that was a very bold thing to do. That was a risk. How do I go to a strange country? I did not know a single soul in Botswana with three young children. I didn't have a babysitter. I didn't even know what was going to happen to the kids when I was going to work. It was crazy. I thought it was crazy. But I, I saw it. I saw the picture and thought it was crazy. <laughs> you know? I took that risk. But you know what? It was the best decision that I made in my life in hindsight because mm. it really launched my international career. And it has allowed me to be able to take so many uh, U.S. students to Africa and show them how research is done in foreign countries, which has really, I think, expanded uh, their views about Africa. Mm -hmm. It has also allowed me to mentor a lot of African students in the earth sciences. So a lot of them, we've been able to bring a lot of students to the United States from Cameroon area, to Botswana, Malawi, Zambia, Uganda, you know, all over, that it has given right. me that opportunity also to be able to help, you know, uh, educate the next generation of African earth scientists. That's awesome. Because as you said before, you, you, I know you were saying it like, okay, that's what in those days, parents were, they had the, the, the careers true, a lot has changed for the better, it has evolved, but intrinsically, it is still that. Yes. Most people still do doctor, lawyer, that's the thing. And especially when it comes to women, you still have places and areas where people don't think it's too much worth the trouble to educate a woman. Mm -hmm. And well, if they're well to do, they're like, just go to school for going sake. And then if they're not, and they have to pick and choose which of the children that they have mm -hmm. should get this education, they pick the boys, even if they're not necessarily the ones with much of the promise. So the smart girl would get left at home. The boys will get to go. And then even for the girls who do go, nobody's thinking of telling them to go do, to be a geophysicist. Yeah. So you really are doing something there um, in so many ways, more than, I, I, I know you, you know it, but I think far more than you even realize <laughs> just by existing and being you, the lessons are just there for us to see. Yes. And so, um, I, I know that I have here, I, if I had to ask you what you what exactly you would credit your success to or to who or to, you've already mentioned quite a few, but if specifically, yes. including the teach, the professor who gave you that challenge and you said, oh, I will show you pretty much or I'll show myself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Including those, so who would you, mm -hmm. if you had to single out and spot out a few people on the way, who would you say? Well, you know, I would say that as I've, as I've already said that, my parents really believed in me and my abilities, even sometimes more than I believed, right? Mm -hmm. With my mother really instilling that sense of tenacity and self-worth and self-esteem in me, because you need that. You do. In the career pathways that, you know, we've taken. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, definitely my husband has been incredible. 
<laughs> you know, uh, it, he's been truly incredible supporting. Yeah. You cannot survive an, a career in academia if your partner or your spouse or your husband or your wife doesn't support you because fact it's a real fact and he's been there he's also in academia of course yeah. but he has really been there 100 percent 110 percent motivating me encouraging me pushing me forward um like you can do this you can go to the next step yes you should do this you can go to the next step you know so it's been it's been incredible having him as a great supporter and cheerleader i knew and that i was coming but i had to ask it that's right and 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 definitely my family oh my goodness look i have an incredible family mm -hmm. and from those that volunteered to babysit how do you do this without having uh stability at home for the kids what we call a support you system know, That's that was an international system. career right. um i was always gone have the reason why i have hardly ever attended some of the uh, uh seca conventions is because at that time of the year I am in Africa, right? Or just coming back from Africa. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gone for six weeks. I'm gone for two months. So what happens to the kids when you're gone for that long? Mm -hmm. And I'm going into the bush, as they say. So it's not exactly like the kind of thing that I can say, kids no, come along with me. It's not going to, 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 chill, chill, them to chill on the deck of a cruise a That's ship, right. Cruise boat. It, mm -mm. Exactly. You know, so I think just having the family members that have always been there to support me, uh encourage me it's just been incredible and for the things that i've been able to accomplish um you are a teacher yourself those students have i've been really blessed to have some incredible students and i always say when you're a university professor really you bring the ideas but the students are the ones at the end that do the work true and some of the discoveries are made by the students and so i think those students and the many collaborators that I've had over the years, everybody somehow have contributed, whether in a small way or in a big way, to help me become what I am today. Yep. We, and we don't forget the friends there, because the friends are there, because, you know, of course, a lot of my friends have always adopted them and they become my sisters. Mm -hmm. or my brothers <laughs> you know so it does take a village it does take a community to develop yes. a person yes. that's basically what yes. i'm saying thing as, a, as, a, as a support system that's that, right. that that you have to have a solid one there behind you to be to, to allow you to blossom and mm -hmm. know that they are there for the rough times for the good times mm -hmm. and will just help to propel you there are even those that you're kind of accountable to because yeah. if you, are, you you don't want to disappoint them, they are proud. They celebrate their successes. They 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 they, they comfort you with the with the yeah. failures and challenges and motivate you. It's a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. It yep. is. It's a wonderful it thing. Is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you already talk about you covered. I was going to ask you about how balancing career and hope you've already covered that because you've said it you, that the village would step in, the support system would step in when yes. you not be there, and then you just have a supportive uh, a family. Was earlier on when you're talking about um self worth, how your mother had said, no, you need to be somebody who can sustain your own self and everything. That's a, the, the description of a strong woman. Yes. Which unfortunately, some people are afraid of. Yeah. As opposed to it scares the it scares the the, the living That's daylight right. out of them. That's as right. Opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to somebody like your spouse that you have there who's who just only wants you to get better yes. yep. because you shine he shines right along with you it's that your family shining that's true but actually in your case it's your life when i said what's your name i did hear you mention kwate you said my name is estella I take one. I take one. <laughs> there it is right there <laughs> I so, know. So, so it is the thing yeah i'm just throwing in the quarter that was for throwing it because you mentioned your mom and everything yes. and you mentioned your biologically there's just the two your sister you and your sister yes. so if we needed to prove that man quite did what it is that you say she did yeah. then we might as well mention that that sister happens to be a supreme court judge yes which is not which is amazing in amazing. Cameroon as well so very proud there's of something very proud to of be her. said yeah for the way you were raised there's no other way to slice that kukoyam somebody did something right that's the proof true. is right there that we, we, can, we can all see. Yep. And I was going to ask you, though, based on what you've said, it maybe it's a silly question to ask if there's anything you would do differently. Because I can tell that just like I think 
even the things that we say did not go right are part of what we are. So I don't know that there's anything you would want to change. If you, you look in hindsight and say, I wish this were this or that was that, do you? I would say that, you know, I got into academia mm -hmm. by chance, not because that was a path that I planned for myself, mm -hmm. but when you, when you have a PhD, mm -hmm. that's what you end up doing. <laughs> you end All up right. getting into, most times you get into, you know, higher education mm -hmm. uh, and, and into academia. So that's how I found myself there. But then I realized that I love imparting knowledge on students. Yeah. It is my passion. Mm. And you know, I've thought about it. I, I'd like to, em I really love to empower people. And the best way of doing that is to be a teacher. Hello. Exactly right. You know that. You I, know get that like, huh? I get it. Like I get it. You get it. that feeling. Yes. When, when a student is graduating and they come and they hug mm. you and they say thank you and the parents hug you, they say, my daughter has talked, or my son has talked so much about you, how much mm. you love them. Thank you so much for making a difference in their lives. I can mm. tell you how many times I meet so many uh, alumni that will come back and they will say, you know, you did this to me. People write to me, right. uh, you were my role model. I'm like, I didn't even know. Some of them, I didn't even know, really. I didn't even know who the students are. And they're telling me, you were my role model. And I've looked at it and I said, when you can change the future of somebody, when you can give somebody a future and a hope. Yes. When God uses you in that position. Yes. That is the best feeling, fulfillment that I get. And I've said, even if I was, I didn't plan on getting into academia, mm -hmm. but if I was to turn back the clock, knowing what I know now, I will still do what I am doing. Right. Okay. Because I really feel that it's such, it, it is such an incredible feeling to take that student who knew nothing and then all of a sudden you see what they have become the light bulb blossoms. goes on and then they blossom and yes. they come and they tell you i got into this college and i jump and run around the yes. classroom you got into duke i got into susan so thing yeah. and we, we were sitting, sitting there and writing recommendations for them and yes. tell them you can do yeah. it go get yeah. the the grants go ask your guidance counselor to the scholarships and things out there look for It is the, there's nothing money can buy that. It's mm -hmm. it, That's when it becomes not the paycheck you really get from the bank at the end of the day. It's your soul that is just filled with, it's fulfilling. That's one job mm -hmm. that is fulfilling. It because is. as we know, teachers generally don't make much in this country. Mm -hmm. They don't really make what they People don't realize anywhere. that. They think that teachers make a lot. Maybe university professors don't make that much <laughs> money. Uh, but I'm fulfilled in yes. doing the things that I do. Yes. And... I love to invest in the future. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as teachers, we are investing in the future of a nation. Yes. Of the world. Really, people mm -hmm. don't realize that, but that's what teachers do. They play a very, very important role. Right. Um, to me, I think teachers, the role they play should have been the highest paid in our society. But of course, they're not. They are probably one of the lowest paid mm -hmm. in the society, which is unfortunate because they're really investing in the children. They're investing in the future of the nation. Right. And so I've always had a passion for students. I've had a passion for my early career faculty because mm -hmm. I also see them as the future of the university and making them strong uh, really ensures a very strong future of that department or future of that university. Mm -hmm. So that's why I've seen it. And people don't realize a bit, uh, or many people, maybe those of us coming from Africa. I think, right, those there's, of us there's, there's from, a, slight, a slight freeze, yeah, sorry. I saw Go that. On. Mm -hmm. Those of us coming from Africa do realize that education is really a way for social mobility, upward it mobility, is. right? Is. We know that without education, it can lift people up from poverty and give them a really bright future. And so we've really paid attention to how we are training students to make sure that we are e equipping them with those skills that can allow them to be successful in the future. Yeah. So I would say if I look back now, I, I will still do what I'm doing you know, today. Yes. Um, the other thing that I would say though, is that I think if I had a better understanding of American culture mm -hmm. and 
the American financial system, I would do even better. Mm -hmm. So I've been really big on impacting entrepreneurship and innovation in my students because okay. remember that problem solving? Yes. So teaching the students how to solve problems mm -hmm. that society needs, very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can get a lot of our students there, we can break out of this mold within our African communities mm -hmm. where we think that everybody, the only path to success is you got to go to medical school or you got to go do something. And really that holds students, the whole kids back. A kid wants to be a musician, wants to do music, wants to paint. Nobody will let them do that. Oh, you're going to be poor. Oh, I will not let any of my kid do that. And we, we cause a lot of mental health right. issues in, right. in our kids. Right. Because we are forcing them into this mold. But meanwhile, look at the successful people today. Look at the Bill Gates and, and look at the whoever, you know. Uh, it's problem solving. Right. That ability to solve a problem, identify, identify. A and feel that need. Meet it. Meet that Meet need. It. So to me, that I would say is the only thing that if I had more time, I would, I would, I would love to have been more engaged in that. Yes. And so I can't, I feel like I have too many things to do right now. And so my goal is to impact that in the younger generation. That ignites that, that, that spirit in them. That's this, you, you, the go-getter, find ways. When the challenges come, find ways around it. Don't yes. say, I can't do it. Uh, who else has done it? Uh, maybe so and so, no, why not be the first person to do it? Uh, I really feel that that's what Africa needs today yes. because we cannot continue to, we cannot just be a consumer economy and let everybody produce things that we consume. Right. We produce a lot of the raw materials, right? right? They all come from Africa mm -hmm. and we need to figure out ways by which to make things that we can use right there in our local region. And, 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 and even happen. reverse the flow, we can export the things instead of just importing. Right. First of all, meet our own needs. Meet our own needs. There right. And then get to the point where we're mm -hmm. like, yeah, you are 100%, 100 and 1 million percent correct. I, I see that. Yeah. And I'm hoping that as you're just as you're doing what you're doing, everybody's doing what they're doing, we are waking up the reawakening. I'll call it a reawakening because those, the first mm -hmm. universities were out there. In the, the we talk we hear about the Malian Empire, we talk about Egypt and those kinds of things. It's not a matter of being just only awakening. I call yeah. it a reawakening, our own renaissance. Yeah. This this is. needs to happen. And, the way that and I, I am optimistic about the future of Africa because this younger generation, these mm -hmm. Gen Zs, they they, they will make woke. A they will really make a difference. You know, mm -hmm. we just need to figure out how to equip them. Right. Um, with those skills that they need to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. They problem solvers. They want to meet societal needs. Right. And so that's what they're doing. So I would say that if I, that would be the only thing that I would say that if I understood what I know, know now about America and the opportunities that are so endless, we will not be so stuck up on thinking that there are only three career pathways for people. Right. We even have gone a little bit better because of the time, the, the ones even before you are slightly before your time when you came out here, the way, way before even you came out here, we're not even aspiring even to that. Yeah. You, you went into just, you see somebody there that actually made the A-levels in Cameroon, they come on out here, what are they doing? They're driving a cab. Yes. They're, yeah. and, and not as a stepping stone because anybody can do any kind of job to that's help right. you as a, as a launching stone. pad mm -hmm. to a something. Pad. But, yeah. but that's where they were stuck. So at least if we've shifted from that, I must just come and do whatever I can manage to do to at least these things and getting there and people occupying positions like yours. That's why I so wanted you badly to have you come. People see that you know, people come out here and are successful and are role models for a whole ton of people, including Americans themselves here. Yeah. So it's not a matter of like, I'm the best of the my little corner there. I'm the best because I'm the best no matter what field, it's in other words, it's not affirmative action. I'm just good. Yep. I'm know. just good at what, what I do. I'm mm -hmm. here by merit. Yep. And I know, and I hope, and I wish, and I pray, we are going to hear a lot more from you in academia 
I will be bringing you back here when those positions keep rising and going. It's coming. <laughs> you don't know that I'm getting old, right? I'm heading towards the No, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm going to look at you and believe that. <laughs> look at you. Nobody's going to look at you and believe that. There's a, a ton more of spunk mm -hmm. and grit where all of that has come from. Yes. And so I was going to end up asking you at the end, what advice do you have to give for to young, a young girl listening to this now, but you've already given a ton mm -hmm. of advice. If they have been listening, they have heard it. They've heard yeah. a lot already. But what would you want as a closing word, as yes. advice that you want to say? What would you what would you want to say? Yeah. So again, you know, just thank you so much for inviting me to come on this show. And as I look back on my life and I've said, what has helped to shape me? Mm -hmm. How have I, what are the lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. that I can share with uh, young girls out there? Mm -hmm. And I would say number one is that never allow anybody to define who you are. Yes. Sometimes we leave what people tell us who we are. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest lesson that I think I took from my mom is that defining myself, believing in myself, mm -hmm. follow your passions and do not self-eliminate. Because some people will just say, no, I don't think I'm qualified for this job and they don't apply. Or I don't think I'm going to get it and they don't apply. I don't think that's for me and they don't go there. Okay. So that's what I mean by don't allow uh, others to define who you are. Right. Number two, what has really helped me? I started by saying, I'm a goal setter. Mm -hmm. A plan. You got to have a plan. You can have a personal career plan, a financial plan, an educational plan. Go get a plan. And you get a plan, you set some goals. Mm -hmm. You try to accomplish them. Mm -hmm. Unless you can set those goals, um, as we said, you cannot measure success, how, whether or not you're achieving that plan. Mm -hmm. And I learned this, you won't believe this, this years later on when I was at Oklahoma State. And uh, a, a one of the alumni of the department, uh, Boone Pickens, he's of late now, uh, was a billionaire. All right. And he would always, when the students would ask him to say, Boone, what's the advice? He says, go get a plan. He says, a fool with a plan can outsmart a genius without a plan. So go get one. So I learned that. And therefore, I'm always having plans mm -hmm. because I realize just how important a plan is a road map. You can't say I'm going to North Carolina and you have no plan, no road map. How are you going to get there, right? And then the second thing is, the third thing is, um, I would say get a mentor. Mentoring is so important. I believe that everybody in their life should have a mentor, a coach, and a promoter. Because when I've looked at uh, some of the things that I've been able to accomplish, some of the awards that I've been able to get. And they're countless. Somebody promoted me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I had to know somebody to promote me who understood, who saw my contributions right. and decided to promote that. Right. Very, very important. Everybody can needs I, can a I quickly mentor. jump in there? Because I know there's one you just got. Because I, yes. I don't want us to, to make, you're not about to say it because you're a modest person. <laughs> but I know that there is an award you just got, I think in December. That's correct. That's correct. Please tell us about it. I, I, I If I, I <laughs> have done my own research, I don't have to make you say it. Yeah. But please tell us about it because it is a very prestigious award. It, it was very, I was really honored to have been nominated uh, to become a fellow of the American Geophysical Union. American Geophysical Union has more than 65,000 members and only 0.01% can be elected fellow in any given year. And these are earth and space scientists who have made significant contributions through breakthrough and discovery in their research, but also promote diversity, equity, and inclusion and in training the next generation of scientists. So, so proud of you. you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I hear, even I, who am not, I'm not the best at math or arithmetic, I know 0.001% <laughs> is, yes. is nothing percent. That's it, it's, it's like almost nobody gets there of 65. So very, very few people. Very few and people. And for me, it meant a lot because 
Uh, the organization, of course, is not very diverse. The geosciences is not a diverse field. And there are very few Blacks, people, Black people who've ever had become a fellow. And so it meant a lot to me mm -hmm. because I believe that with that representation, I hope to be able to inspire the next generation of you know, Earth and space scientists mm -hmm. to say, you can do it. And with hard work, you can get here as well. Right. Yeah. So, right. and anyway, so we're talking about my, so the third one was, I say that mm -hmm. I really encourage people to get a mentor. You know, and when I was thinking about it, I said, you know, that's exactly what SECA did when they established Dulongs and Petits. Right. It was really mentoring. They may not have called it a mentoring, but that's that what really what they were saying. If you think about your grand long, your petit long, they helped you, right? Mm -hmm. They opened you to their own networks. Right. And so I think having mentors that can open networks to you is mm -hmm. so important. Very. Very, very important. I think that perhaps sometimes we don't use our alumni network enough yeah, in the really, United yes. States mm -hmm. that we need to do a lot more. If you come, if if I want to work with my donors, you know, I and I said, hey, when you open the door, it says I'm from UC Davis, immediately the countenance changes. Right. 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 They're like, oh, you know, we have internship for students, you know, we have this opportunity, we can do mentoring. And I think that even as secretaries or extras, mm -hmm. we should be doing that for other secretaries, opening doors for them, opportunities, get them through the door. So yep. that mentoring is so critical and important and having that network. Networks, I think in this country to move forward, you need a network. You do. And so that would be a really strong advice that I would give is to find those networks, get attached to them, find a mentor uh, and work with them. Mm -hmm. And um, you got to work hard, right? Right. And because success never comes from being lazy, mm -hmm. uh, it comes to grit. I talked about some of the challenges and the tenacities, sticking with it. Right. And just remember that, you know, winners never quit. Right. And quitters never win. Never win. Yep. That's it. It's, you just said it. I've sat here. I think I'm, I, I'm going to get a, have a next sprint because I've been nodding, nodding. <laughs> <laughs> nodding the entire time. Like just saying, this is sound advice. This is just an amazing, your life is an amazing life. You've, you've a life with purpose um, that you've lived, I know for yourself as mm -hmm. an individual, but for a lot of other people, some might not know. And that is why I wanted you to just please come on here because even if it's one more person, which I know is not going to be just one, that gets to listen and be inspired, then we've made, we've made a palpable difference. Every little life, every little soul, that mm -hmm. is changed. That was going down a path, a different path matters. But sometimes you tell them, the kids come and tell you, they have their head down. And I'm like, what's going on today? No, there's a lot of issues going on at home. And, there's, mm -hmm. and I say, you know what? You're only making it worse if you come here too and don't succeed. This is your ticket out of the misery you're describing to me. It is. It is. Sit here, focus, and then you don't have to put up with this anymore mm -hmm. because you'd be able to be independent and have your own life and everything. So thank you thank you thank you so very much for taking out time which i have a very busy schedule to come and do this for us yeah. i cannot thank you enough i cannot thank your family that supports you uh, and that's uh, enough uh your students and everything and i have to say i wish you the very very best and with the prayers and the wishes i have said it i, I don't i'm not a prophet or anything <laughs> This is so. I'm. This is so not the, the the end of this. There's going to be more steps mm -hmm. uh, ahead for you. So thank yeah. you, thank you so much yes. for being a part of this show today, being the inspiration that you are. And I only say, Godspeed ahead. And thank you so much, Egwe. And I really want to thank you for what you're doing. As I started, and this is really important work you are doing. You may not realize it, but it is because by having me here. And just allow me to share my story. Mm -hmm. I hope that somebody listening out there can say, you know what, I can do it as well. And I'm happen. always open to serve as mentors for people out there. Um, I have, I mean, I mentor so many, so many young women, mm -hmm. uh, even men across the globe. So I'm always here if somebody, you know, wants to talk to me, um, I'm happy to be able to talk to them. I am sure that they will reach out. I am very positive 
reach out to you. So thank you very much, uh, you. Uh, Professor Estela Atekwana Dean. Uh, I don't know what, what which is your titles is even the right one to use anymore. <laughs> There's a stream of them, all of which you have earned in your through your own heart by dint of your hard work and your uh, uh, grit, like you said. We are very proud of you. You should know that. We probably don't tell you enough, but we are very proud of you. I'm glad to be able to tell them this interview that we've just done, and I'm going to play it for my students. That's what I. That's what I, I will do. Say, listen, Aww. listen. <laughs> See, I, you, you guaranteed. We're going to sit down there and say, and we're going to say, let's just listen. And when somebody tells you, when I tell you that I know people who have done this, been there, done that, you can too. Mm. It's because it's true. So, so I, we thank you for just uh, being somebody that we can look up to, uh, that we can uh, be proud of, to put it that way. Thank so you. thanks, and uh, I have you right back here when the next step, the next step in your career comes <laughs> along. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, now, bye for now. Okay, bye.